hi guys welcome back to my channel i am oa buzz sensational butterfly queen as i love to call myself this is a place where i use the things that i have walked through in life for the honor and glory of god today i'm going to be talking about my experience with living with panic attacks and anxiety let's get into the video my experience with panic attacks and anxiety was very nerve-wracking to say the least i had my first panic attack at i think i was 21 years old and i had just gone to the doctor and received um shocking news that i have a hole on in my heart and number one the doctor who did the examination she didn't explain to me um the consequences of having a hole in my heart all she said is that I can possibly die from it and no one wants to hear they're gonna die I'm sorry as much as we are believers in Christ we tend to when it comes to facing death we tend to shy away from it so she said um yeah I can possibly possibly die from having that hole in my heart that was all I needed to hear and <laughs> my mind went crazy and from then I started having panic attacks. Over so three months later where I had to go go to the doctor to see the um, the heart specialist and for the heart specialist to tell me that my heart is completely fine. Whatever she saw on the x-ray initially was just a glitch in the um, in the the extra machine system whatever that thing is called but so a glitch in an x-ray caused me to constantly live in fear of death for three months straight it was so bad that i went to the emergency room once i think maybe two weeks after the diagnosis I went to the emergency room. My mother had to take me to the emergency room. Why? Because I went to sleep that night and my heart started beating so fast. I told myself that I was going to die that night. I was sweating. My chest was tight. My muscles were aching. I mean, I had all the classic symptoms of a panic attack. A full-blown panic attack was happening to me. July and August are some of our very hottest months back in the islands. So, being hot on the outside and hot, and me telling my mom, my mom that, oh, I'm freezing cold, sounded crazy to her. But nevertheless, she took me to the emergency room. And the doctor, the, the, the emergency room specialist said from the x-ray that um, he had, he can't see anything that is wrong with my heart, but I should keep the appointment to the specialist. But I wasn't convinced. I was not convinced I wasn't dying, dying that night. So therefore, the doctor prescribed me sleeping medications for, uh, I believe it was a week. So that I can actually get some sleep because at that point I wasn't sleeping at all. I wasn't sleeping. So he pres prescribed me some sleeping medication. Those are, and those kind of, and those actually help to put me to sleep and calm my fears. But living those three months until I went to see the heart specialist was very hard for me. It was very hard for me. I had to constantly tell myself that I am not dying and my mom had to you know pray with me a lot during those times because I felt literally as if to say my heart was gonna explode out of my chest and that's because of fear because of fear I moved moved to the US and then I stood in front of my college speech class to give a presentation and me being from the island, I have an accent. And as soon as I open my mouth to speak, the whole class begin to laugh. 
and right in front of my classmates I broke down in uncontrollable tears in a full-blown panic attack again and from since that day I have had some form of anxiety while I don't have the full-blown panic attacks I still do have um, bouts of anxiety issues going on in my life and I I have to remind myself that there is nothing for me to dread there's not I should stop the worrying and telling yourself to stop worrying it's easier said than done but somehow it happens somehow the Lord constantly reminds me of his goodness and he reminds me of his love for me and he reminds me that in any situation that I'm in he's always with me as a result of having panic attack I also develop a slight stutter so sometimes I'm speaking and if I get very passionate in my speech and if I get very agitated when I'm talking I have a slight stutter but over the years it has that the stuttering has gotten a little bit better over the years because I have learned to basically not get so excited when I'm talking and it's very hard for me because I'm very animated when I'm talking so sometimes I want to get so animated but I know within myself I'm going to become agitated and that agitation that is going to set off at the anxiety within, within my system so I have to constantly remind myself to be calm be calm <laughs> that is sometimes very hard for me to be calm because I'm very passionate, especially if it's a topic that I love to talk about, I'm very, very passionate about it. So therefore, sometimes when I'm speaking in front of a crowd, I become so passionate that I forget everything about the stuttering and I just go on and talk and talk and talk and talk and stumble over my words. But it's okay. We're getting there. It's an open battle. Okay? We get in there. But living with anxiety is one thing, but having panic attacks, my God. To actually tell yourself that you're dying and feel you live, live, like you're dying is it's a horrible experience. It's a horrible experience. And to keep myself from going into her into panic mode I often reflect and when I go and do reflection at the end of my day I it makes me stay up all night and worry about stupid things that I shouldn't even be worrying about and if I don't catch myself for a couple of days, I can go on like that, not sleeping. And till I have to remind myself that you're worrying about something. It's in your subconscious, but you're worrying about something. And then I have to do reflection and see where did this, it all started. Where is the starting point? And that helps me to fall asleep all over again so anxiety worrying and constantly thinking constantly over analyzing things can cause me be to lose sleep at night i should say it can cause me to lose sleep at night but i've learned to overcome I go to sleep and I play the, the scriptures all, all night even though I'm sleeping the word of the word the word of God is, is renewing my mind as I sleep 
I listen to music and when I'm awake I read the word of God a lot. Many people say that I'm a, a Bible scholar. It's not really that I'm, I'm a Bible scholar. It's just that I read so much of the word of God to keep my, my, my myself in a place of calm and serene that as an effect it goes in. If, if I cancel, if you're constantly doing something, it's going to, after a while, it's going to stick. So, so I, that's a, one way of me learning the Bible, by just reading it. And then when I have to study it, it's, 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 it's a little bit easier because I'm always reading it. Another way that I cope with anxiety is by journaling my thoughts. <laughs> If I have a negative thought, instead of uh, making up a narrative in my mind, I journal about that thought in my journal. Therefore, I get it from my thoughts, put it out there, onto paper. And the, when, I, when I put it on paper, it's, it's like me kind of releasing it i should say it's kind of let me re releasing that worry out of my mind and leaving it in god's hand so some of my tips to some of my worry words out there because i do know there are a lot of people out there who suffer with anxiety and who suffer with panic attacks some some people actually have to um go to therapy I'm thankful that I don't have to go to therapy or anything like that. But I know that there are some people who have severe, severe panic attacks. So much so that they don't even want to leave their homes. Living with panic attacks can be very um, destructive to your life. It, you can become depressive because you basically don't have a life of your own when you're living in a constant state of fear and, and then you become depressed and we all know that a lot of people who commit suicide they have um they have had depression in their life so it's kind of it's very scary to to walk that life of um dealing with panic attacks it's not something that i would wish on anyone it's not something that i want anyone to experience for themselves because your mind is telling you something and you're feeling the physical symptoms but it's it's all in your brain it's all in your mind and Telling someone, oh, it's all in your mind, it's not going to help them. Sometimes you just got to sit with the person and let them experience the, the feelings that they're feeling. But being there with them in that moment so that they know that they're not alone in, in the situation that they're going through. It, I can see why, why God said that we are to renew our minds on a daily basis. Because when we renew our minds, we are constantly casting down those thoughts that come to make us worry and cause stress in, in our life. And when we are so stressful, if we don't learn how to manage stress in our life, then we become anxious and anxiety can lead to panic while anxiety and panic attacks are two different things they still present kind of the same set of symptoms anxiety you can basically recognize your triggers but with um, panic attacks it's something that comes on so sudden that you don't even we realize thoughts that we it happens majority of the time because there's underlining fears and thoughts that we 
we are not conscious about. But for me, I know that's what mine was. Mine was rooted in fear, the fear of dying. And the fear of so many things. When the Bible says, fear has torment. My God, it is so true. Fear has torment. And that's how the devil torments us. He torments us to, to such a state that we become anxious and we have panic attacks. My word of encouragement to you today is to dive into the word of God. Find a scripture and meditate upon it. My scripture for this year is John 1. John 14, rather, and verse 1, it says, Let not your heart be troubled. If you believe in God, believe also in me. And later on in that same chapter, I believe it's um, verse 17, it says, My peace I give unto you, not as the world gave, give I unto you. So clearly Jesus is telling us that he leaving us his peace. And we have to hold on to the peace of God in these times where life seems so uncertain and things and situations arise that cause us to worry and stress and become stressed out. So remember the peace of God in your heart today. Remember that God has not given you a spirit of fear, but of love and of power and of a strong mind. These are the scriptures that I, I repeat over myself to remind myself that I don't have anything to fear once God is on my side. I will see you all in my next video. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe for future videos.